guys, I am sitting here with this lovely, amazing lady. I feel like I've known her for years. We've only been sitting here talking for maybe about five minutes. And she is just absolutely awesome. As I say, she has a really wonderful aura about her where you can just sit and talk to her and chat about anything. So please help me welcome Miss Myrna. Myrna to the show. <laughs> Hi, Ms. Okay. Myrna. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Mm, yes. Well, you look great. Yeah, thank you. You look fantastic. Thanks. So, can you please tell us where you're from? I am originally, I was born in Jamaica, but mm. I have lived in the UK since I was 11 years of age. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. So, how, how was that for you, being from Jamaica, then coming to, to England? Um, quite different, because mm. in Jamaica, I was free. Mm -hmm. in the sense that I was able, I lived in a community where everyone knew everyone. Um, I was able to run around, play, climb mm -hmm. trees, do things like that. Yeah. When you go to the UK, which the weather is totally different, it's cold, mm -hmm. then you start to be restricted and you find yourself hugging radiators. <laughs> Would you than... say hugging radiators? <laughs> Trust me, I did. <laughs> right, I don't blame you. <laughs> um, because you were cold, you didn't want mm -hmm. to go out. And also when I first went there, I didn't know anyone yeah. until I started school, making friends and mm. things like that. But again, you were restricted because mm. environment and what you were allowed to do was mm. so different. And I, when I went to England, racism was very, very in your face. Really? It was a time when you saw signs on the windows saying mm. no no children no irish mm. no children no dogs no blacks wow that's deep um and i was fortunate that my parents had their own house mm -hmm. so we didn't really but in those case days mm. those are what young people young children had to read they know the boundaries of where they can go and where they couldn't go. Wow, it's so interesting you're sharing this because mm -hmm. me being from the States, we don't kind of know each other's history. Like I've always thought that people in England maybe had it a little bit better than people in America. But what you're sharing with me is that it was you guys faced racism as well. We did. And mm -hmm. I think the difference between America and England racism Mm -hmm. is that America, you're likely to lose your life yeah, when yeah. we didn't. Okay. We weren't likely okay. to, because our police officers don't walk mm. around with guns, never walked around with guns. Mm. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was more the distance being kept mm -hmm. than yeah. anything else. And I'll give you an example. When I, when I was about 12, I joined the Girl Guides. Yeah, what's that? It's an organ organization for young children mm -hmm. to learn about the environment and learn about charity work, learning about doing activi different di activities and mm -hmm. things like that within the community. And um, it's similar to the Scouts. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's a girl the section mm -hmm. and the Brownies are the younger, younger girl children. Mm -hmm and it was a, the week of doing good and mm -hmm. i got on a bus and it was a week of doing good and i went to allow mm -hmm. this white elderly white woman to get on the bus before me and i went to help her on mm -hmm. and she went take her black hands off me oh you, wow and how did that make you feel the fact that i'm talking about it mm -hmm. 60 odd years later mm -hmm is to tell you the impact it had on me. Because I've never faced racism mm -hmm. up until that day. Because in the Caribbean where everyone is black, yeah. you don't, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. And I came from an environment where adults care for children mm -hmm. and always make sure you're safe. Then mm -hmm. suddenly realize colors made a difference because up to then, yes, there are white people in Jamaica, mm -hmm. but it was never an issue. Yeah, yeah. But suddenly it became, and I resigned from the um, 
go guys i refused point blank to go back after that wow well i'm sure yeah. that was kind of traumatizing a little bit That's, for you yeah. Of I course, think a little more than that yeah. because I refused to even let my children join the guys after wow. that when I had children. That's, you know? that's actually really, really sad. Yeah. You know how much racism can have an impact, an impact. You know, on yeah. you and kind of you being almost like a culture shock, you being from one environment to another, yeah. you know. So, the thing yeah. also with that is two ways it can deplete you mm -hmm. or it can have the opposite effect. I will show you. <laughs> like, I'm going to show you what And I am a, I will show you person. Mm -hmm. oh, I and love I that. think that came from being told the only person that put restrictions on you mm -hmm. is you. Nobody sure. puts restriction on you but yourself. Mm. And if you allow, if somebody else put restriction on you, it's because mm. you allow them and you give them that power to do so. Exactly. I, I love that attitude. I really do. And I can tell you're a lady like you go for it. You really go. So I'm going to prove you wrong. Yeah. So segueing from that, mm. how did you like come here and here to Ghana? Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, mm -hmm. I fell and broke my wrist, my left wrist. Oh. Um, I had just come back from holiday, did my 10, down lock, 10 days lockdown. Mm -hmm and went to my allotment and fell and broke my wrist. Oh, bless your heart. So I couldn't leave home, I couldn't drive, I couldn't do anything. And I started to watch the internet and mm. came across Jasmine. Mm. And the, the young lady in, from Scotland. And oh, she okay. was living here at the time. Mm -hmm. And from watching her, I've been able to log on to a lot of others and wow. fell in love with the idea of Ghana and thought oh. I want to find out more about Ghana. Okay, so you fell in love with Ghana, I guess, through through YouTube? Through YouTube, mm -hmm. very much so. Oh, wow. Yes. Well, shout out to you, Jasmine. You know, Definitely. <laughs> you were the one that brought yeah. this lovely lady here. Yes. So with you being here in Ghana, what have been some of like your experiences, good and bad? <laughs> I have had some fantastic, fantastic experiences in Ghana. Mm, well, name one, at least one for me. One? Mm. Okay. Went to the Cape Coast, mm. the bus coming down did not terminate where I expected to terminate, to terminate earlier. Mm. And there was a young schoolgirl on there and she realized when we got to that point, I, I think I asked her, isn't this not going to circle? And she went, no. Mm -hmm. She said, where do you want to go? I said, I need to go to circle to get my bus to my um, the area I'm staying at. Mm -hmm. So she said, don't worry, stay with me. Mm -hmm. Got off and this taxi driver came to me trying to get me to go with him. Mm -hmm. And she spoke to him in your know, language mm -hmm. and in the end she just took my hand and she said to him that's all right mm -hmm. we'll go otherwise took my hand and said come with me mm -hmm. got me on the bus we got off it got the right bus got to circle paid for me we're talking about a 15 year old girl wow she paid for she you? paid for me her phone wasn't working so she mm -hmm. had to borrow someone's phone on the bus mm -hmm. to phone her parents to let her know, them know she was down because her phone wasn't working right, right. and she had an assignment on her phone and she had a, a day to hand in her assignment mm -hmm. to school and I'm saying to her look I can pay I've got money she went no that's fine she paid mm -hmm. when we got to circle she took me to the bus and put me on the bus I needed spoke oh, wow. to the driver to make sure he dropped me off where I wanted to come off yeah. and gave me her address, gave me her name and her phone number for me to ring her to let her know I got where I'm going on my destination. Oh, what, a, what a sweetheart. <laughs> you know, Ghana has got some young people and that's just one Wow. See, I'm of telling my you about experience. that aura. You have that aura about Just you. Just one of mm -hmm. my experience. 
Wow. Right. And yet my family and friends yeah. in England, every two minutes, they're doing countdown. You're coming back now. And I want to leave me alone. <laughs> it's like, I want to stay here. <laughs> exactly. I'm not saying it. It's exactly. like, this is my home. Exactly. <laughs> this is my home. So I you, will be yeah. back. God swear. Really. You'll Trust be back. Me. I will be back. You have to be back. Yeah. You really do. So can you like just share one thing? What has, besides from that, has been like the most funnest thing or highlight of being here in Ghana? Uh, for me, it's the people. Mm -hmm. For me, it's the people. Mm -hmm. And I think where I was going to come with friends or relatives, I'm so glad I came on my own because mm -hmm. the things I did, like getting on the local bus, mm -hmm. I know most of them <laughs> wouldn't do it. Right. Yeah. And I wanted to do the local bus because mm -hmm. that way I would get to know and meet genuine people. Right. Right. And I really can say I have done so. Oh, what a blessing. And <laughs> I think although Ghana has got a lot of natural mineral um, resources, mm -hmm. their goal is their people Aww. and the young people. They're, it's really wonderful here. You know, they're very attentive to people who are, you know, who are older than them. And I'd say that's a really lovely thing because you don't really see that a lot in the West. You know you don't what I see mean? It at all in the yeah, West. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like whatever. I don't care. Yeah. But here, it's you know, it's a respect for yeah. elders and people who are older than you, yeah. and it makes you feel really, really yeah. special. That's right. It really does. But one thing, what's your favorite Ghanaian food? You have to tell me. Oh dear. <laughs> I can't guy. really say because <laughs> yesterday was probably the first time I had mm -hmm. a real Ghanaian food. What'd you have? And I had the baked tilapia mm -hmm. with kaluele, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Oh, okay. And it wasn't too mm -hmm. spicy with pepper. Oh, it was yes. just right because mm -hmm. I keep hearing a lot of diaspora is saying online mm. that how oh, hot is too peppery is too that yeah. but it wasn't it was really just perfect to my taste bud to be quite honest mm. and I, thought, I enjoyed it very much oh yummy well i'm yeah. glad you thoroughly enjoyed yes. it so listen you've fallen in love with grilled tilapia and kelly Lowe. yes uh yes. so what is one myth that you would say about that's the narrative out there about ghana that's not true there is so many out there that mm. is not true. Yeah. I have not seen any child with flies on their face and pot <laughs> belly yet. And I've been here for 21 days. See. And I have traveled local buses mm. and mixed them with local people mm. um, since I've been here. See? No child with flies on their face and a big belly. None at all. <laughs> Trust me. You know, yeah. don't you hate that? And this, <laughs> it's like this, a myth. This myth of that we must fear being mm -hmm. in camp. In, no, not at all. Not at all. See, I mean, this is like your, this is yeah. like your second home. <laughs> so, my first. This is your first home, okay? This is your first home. Yeah, so definitely. what would you want, like, your brothers and sisters, you know, from the diaspora? What's one thing, one piece of advice that you would want them to know coming to visit or even repatriating here, maybe? Well, I would say you come mix with the people, mm -hmm. the local people. Don't set yourself apart mm -hmm. because in that case, you are bringing the West with you and yeah. you are not experiencing Ghana mm -hmm. as Ghana should be experienced. Exactly, exactly. Really do. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I have like so much to ask you, but I don't want to take up so much of your time. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on the channel. And yeah. I mean, this was just so natural between us. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're, you're an awesome woman. Thanks very and much. And I'm telling you, Ghana, yeah. Ghana is awaiting you. <laughs> I agree, I agree, I agree. <laughs> and thank yeah. you guys for tuning in. And please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and please share this information with others. Until Definitely next share. time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>